Zamorak is considered one of the best money makers you can currently do. But what if I tell you the dungeon that leads up to Zamorak has one of the most forgotten money makers with a high GP per hour in the game. So if that excites you, stay tuned and let's dive right in. For those who do not know or who have forgotten, it is Sliver Farming in the Zamorakian Undercity. As for the requirements, 80 plus combat just so you can withstand all of the damage that they can put out to you within the dungeon. 96 plus Herblore so you can make your overloads. Overload salves are a huge plus with this since it does give you the anti-poison for when you fight up against the juvenile Cerberus. For anything high tier like this method, curses are a mandatory thing. The deflect magic and the deflect melee are huge at negating the damage that they deal with you within this dungeon because everything in this dungeon hits like a truck. As for the recommendations, higher combat and gear, the better. When you have better gear and higher combat, the faster you can progress through the beginning part of this dungeon. I also highly recommend the ability to make and binding contracts as there's a couple hellhounds at the beginning of the dungeon to where you can also maximize your profits. As for this method, I didn't calculate the XP per hour, but it's all combat. So whatever combat style you're using, I'm telling you now, it is going to be awesome XP rates. Now you're also going to be looking at gaining 150,000 Dungeoneering tokens per hour doing this method and a whopping 76 mil plus GP per hour. As I said before, you're gonna to wanna to bring your best combat gear for your best style. For me, I'm gonna be running with the first Necromancer set along with the tier 95 weapons. For the aura, I'm gonna be using the Vampirism aura as I'm gonna be using the Deflect Curses during this entire method. I'm also gonna be running with the Zuck Cape for self-explanatory reasonings and the Essence of Finality with the Death Guard spec inside of it. As for the ring, I am running with the Luck of the Dwarves. I feel like it helps with the dungeon drops on getting the slivers. But I cannot find too much information on the drops within the dungeon while using Luck Enhancers. As you can see, I'm also going to be bringing the Nexus to hold all of my ruins. And in my pocket slot, you will see that I'm running with the Scripture of Wen book. As for my inventory, you'll notice that I have the Elder Overload Salve. Again, you're going to want to use something that has an anti-poison for the Juvenile Cerberus. I do have a blessed flask, so I bring that along with me almost everywhere I go, but super restore potions will do just as good as a blessed flask. You also want to bring some emergency food, as for my inventory here, I have a bunch of sailfish. And I bring a good bit of binding contracts, because at the beginning of the dungeon where we're going to be fighting, there is two hellhounds that you can collect every single time you run it. Also want to bring the enhanced Excalibur if you have it, and an ancient elven ritual shard if you have it as well. Now for the most important item in your inventory is the Lucky Charms for the Zamorakian Undercity. If you do not have these in your inventory, you will not have a chance of gaining any sliver drops from the normal enemies within the dungeon. Now to get these yourself, you have to head over to Damonheim. You can do that by either going to the Archaeology Guild and using the table and going to the new Damonheim dig site. Or use your Ring of Kinship that you received when you first started Dungeoneering. Once you arrive in Damonheim, you're going to run over to Viral Reward Shop. Once you're in the shop, you're going to go up, click Consumables. You're going to go down to Lucky Charms for the Zamorakian Undercity. And you're just going to buy a handful at first. Unless you have a buttload of Dungeoneering tokens to where you can buy a lot of them, then go ahead. But the dungeon will help in upkeep with all the Dungeoneering tokens from the Cerberus Juvenile. Now, to get to the Undercity, there is a few ways. For one, if you have Wars Retreat unlocked and you have done the dungeon and have defeated Zamorak, then you can just use the portal at Wars Retreat. Another way of getting there is by using the Pontifex Shadow Ring, which you receive after finishing the City of Sentestin quest. And once you arrive in Sentestin, all you have to do is just run north to the pulley that will take you down to the Zamorak in Undercity. Now, if you do not have the pleasure of being able to do any of those method, you can easily teleport to the Varok Lodestone, run east, then run northeast to the Ancient Door. Also, you can use the Archaeology Guild, teleport to it, you just run north to the Ancient Door, click on it, and it will pop you right to the pulley for the Zamorakian Undercity. Now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to get your presets all set up, your gear and your inventory, and make sure you have your lucky charms. Then you're going to click on the pulley. You're going to click no on continuing the dungeon where you left off, 
then you're going to also click on enrage mode and you're going to click at least 20 percent enrage that gives you an extra mage at the very beginning of this dungeon by the barrier there now once you're in the dungeon you're going to make sure you sip your elder overload self you're going to make sure your darkness incantation is up and that you also have the correct prayer deflect on the way I've been running this dungeon is I run down this alleyway, bundle up all the mages right there, hit threads of fate, and then I use the death guard spec, and it usually one shots to two shots them, and then you just hit the chaos witch before you move on to the mini boss, Cerberus Juvenile. For the witches there, you can easily play with threads of fate, you can use soul sap and the volley of souls, save your death guard for the Cerberus, but that's all to your preference. Now, when you are running up towards the Subarus Juvenile, what you're going to do is you're going to swap your curse to deflect melee. Then you're also going to do a death mark as you're running towards them. And then you're just going to use all of the abilities that you have and take them out as quickly as possible. And once you've taken them out, you just teleport back towards your tree and just repeat the same process there. This method for this way is about a minute to a minute and a half each time. Now for the Cerberus Juvenile, the closer you are, the more damage you do. The further you stand back, it's safer, you won't take any kind of hits through the doorway, but less damage. So it just kills your kill time with the Cerberus on doing this method. So make sure you try to stand as close as possible, and if you can't handle the damage, step out of the doorway and attack from the distance. Now the Cerberus Juvenile does have its own drop table, it's just a lot more rare to see all the slivers, but you do gain the same drops that you would gain from the normal enemies in the dungeon while having the lucky charms. Also, while having the lucky charms in your inventory while taking out a super juvenile, there is a chance that you can gain double the amount of slivers. So for instance, if you were to kill the super juvenile and he dropped a sliver of pain, there's also a chance that your lucky charms do proc to even grabbing a sliver of power or a sliver of strength that's also for all the mini bosses within this dungeon. Now, after about an hour, I started changing up the method on how I was running the dungeon. So after I started taking out the Cerberus Juvenile, I started to continue to the next area, to the next room. I found out that once you have the binding contracts, you start collecting Hellhounds, which goes huge towards your profits. I also noticed that the more the merrier on killing the enemies gives you better chances for the sliver drops and from what I've experienced over four hours of doing this method that the majority of the slivers do come from these witches and these chaos which is here in this area the most. And for those who do not know, while running through ED4, you do have a chance for all of your drops to be doubled. And that even includes slivers. As you see on screen, I got lucky for a double drop of sliver of power. So with that being said, this could possibly be even more than 76 mil plus an hour if you get lucky enough with all the drops. Now, after doing about four hours of ED4, I was able to get enough slivers to make two enchantments of shadows, one enchantment of heroism, one enchantment of dread, and one enchantment of flames. All while also collecting loot from normal drops from all the enemies within ED4, which came out to be in about 40.6 mil along the way. So there is multiple ways of being able to gain GP while running ED4 just at the very beginning in between normal loot and the slivers themselves. If I were you, I would pay attention to what you are making with the slivers because the pricing of everything for the tracking gloves to what the enhancements would be when you sell them could differ in many, many ways over time. With all that being said, this is the end of the video. If I missed anything with this method and you know how to make it progress a little bit better than the way I just showed, please let me know down in the comments. And if you found anything useful within this method or you learned something new, please hit that like button and maybe even consider subscribing for future content for money making and novice PVMing. And now that you've learned about this forgotten moneymaker within RuneScape, I hope you guys stay safe. See ya.